Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Friday, March 31st, 2023. And today I'm gonna do a short little video on measuring your compensating elements. Yeah, basically your valve clearance and stuff. We're gonna get an initial setting. We're gonna use this special tool right here. And um, that's about it. So, hey, if you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button. I'm gonna be starting this car live. I hope to start this car live. And I'd like you guys to join me. So uh, if you click the subscribe button and then click the bell, you'll be notified when I do do that. Let me just get right into this video. As always, I've got a lot of things I'm doing, so I'll catch you guys on the next video. The manual's pretty clear on how you can test your compensating element itself to see if it needs to be replaced. And basically all you're doing is just, you know, setting it so your lobes will be up on the cam. Uh, then go ahead and just get like a wooden hammer and push down on that rocker and let up. And, and then try the next one. And then according to this, this is where you have to feel it. If the ball head pressure drops too fast with compared with other ones, then you need to replace that element. And then also, you know, if the rocker itself is, you can move it, they recommend that you check its basic position. According to the manual for checking, it says right here, with newly installed compensating element, Crank engine with starter motor for approximately 30 seconds prior to checking. Well, the master mechanic who's rebuilt over a thousand of these uh, V8 engines uh, says that this is ridiculous, that this is not, the people that write the manuals are not people who build engines. I mean, think about it. We just rebuilt the engine. You did some head work and everything. You got to get a starting point. Otherwise, if you go and stick everything together and crank the engine over, you're going to you're gonna punch a hole through a piston possibly. I mean, you could bend a valve, you know, all kinds of things. So, uh, like he said, you, you've got to get in here and we're gonna measure it now. And of course, they're saying the, the idea here is to get in the middle of this gauge, which I'll show you in a minute. But to do this test, like I said, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to set it so your cam lobes are up. We'll be working, say, start number one. And what I did is I first measured those thrust pieces, right? I, I, I measured them so I know exactly what I'm working with to begin with. As a matter of fact, this, these are the numbers right here. So you can see number four intake and number eight exhaust are the 4.75 thrust washers and all the other ones are 5.10. And you can see 5.10 and then you see the 4.75. So those are the part numbers, depending on what you need to do. So like I said, these are my numbers, but let's talk about the tools that I'm gonna use for the job. Um, we're gonna obviously need a 27 millimeter and a wrench to turn the front crankshaft. The next thing we're gonna need, you can buy an aftermarket one of, this, one of these. Uh, this one here is, specifically made for this vehicle, Mercedes V8. And this is so we can remove our rocker arms and, and install our rocker arms. We're gonna need that. So this is a SIR tool. And you can see that little yellow line on there. I was the one who put that yellow line in there. SIR tool M0024. And that's, they say is from all V8s 76 up, excluding the M119. Uh, but check the manual, make sure you get the right one. You know, I know there were some older ones and different ones and they've made changes and all that kind of stuff. But this is supposedly the right one for this M117. So let's go see how this thing works. Let's first start with this. And I'm going to start on the number one. Number one, exhaust. Number two, 
Number one exhaust with 4.75. Four point seven five. Five exhaust. This is five exhaust with the four point seven five. This is number four exhaust. a little bit right it's on that side going down this is number four exhaust using a 4.75 number one intake Looks perfect to me. Seven intake. I think that one's pretty good. Seven intake. Seven intake with 4.75. Looks like it's wrong. We'll keep it with the original. This is eight exhaust. That looks perfect. And basically that's what I did for all 16 valves. You know, I started out with this original thrust washer and then, you know, looked at where it lined up. If it wasn't right there in the middle, I tried it with a 4.75 since I had that on hand. You'll notice that number four exhaust, I have 4.75 or 4.4. A 4.4 might be too small. Uh, 4.75 is on the border there. So I'm gonna probably just order that other one. I don't know if you wanna go much more than that. You gotta remember, this is a 1987 vehicle with 139,000 miles on it. So I haven't really done anything. I did change all those in intake valves. So you can see those things fared out a little bit better. So there's obviously a little bit of wear there. Um, but other than that, you know, that's kind of what I did is I went through each and every single one of them and measured them and, you know, be aware, you guys can do this, you know, without having your engine out, that's for sure. You know, if you're hearing a lot of noise or you're curious, you can, just get yourself one of these, which reminds me, if you want to see how I use, how I actually use this tool, you know, getting the rocker arm in and out, you know, you can go ahead and watch that video. I'll give a link right up there uh, for that. But now I know what I need. Like I said, these are the, the ones that are in red. Those are the ones I'm going to purchase right there. And uh, what you should do actually is that once you've measured it and you feel good about it, you leave the valve in, I mean, you leave the, uh, the rocker arm in and everything and turn the engine over two times. Nice and easy, make sure you're not gonna hit anything because that will let you know that'll be a full cycle and that'll let you know that what you did was good or at least you're not gonna cause any damage, you won't be banging into the piston. So, so that's how I did it, you know, maybe not how you do it, like I say in all my videos, but uh, that's how I do it, how I was uh, told that I should do it, at least at this stage of the game. Whether or not I remeasure them, I'm kind of curious about that, so I'll probably even remeasure it. Uh, but once those things come back, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna put the, those shims in and go ahead and make sure that everything is good, and then I'm gonna crank it over each one until I get them all installed. So, hey, I thank you guys again for watching.